You're supposed to guard your heart because out of it flow the issues of life. And worship can become a weapon against the discouragement that the enemy tries to throw at every one of us, right? Anybody here lived your life without any discouragement? Right? But all of us go through different seasons. Might be our fault, might not be our fault, but you're, you're feeling the pain of other people and you could feel discouraged. You're not seeing the result. So here, say this with me. We have an unfair advantage. His name is the Holy Spirit. Of course, Jesus and the Father too, but the Holy Spirit in this application is that we can be, like Rich was saying, right out in the middle of a secular workforce, and it's not necessarily, you know, okay to talk about Christian uh, principles overtly, but you can talk about the underlying truth behind it, and in that case, it was servant leadership. Now, he wouldn't have been able to just talk about it unless he was modeling it. Right? And, and that's another way he didn't go into all that detail, but like he has modeled it from the beginning. And without that, then it sounds like an empty promise, doesn't it? But when your heart gets shifted and, and you are a worshiper, what does Jesus say in John chapter 4? The Father is looking for those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. So it's not just that you're mouthing the words of truth, because they are truth. And, and we know this one, like who the sun sets free is. But you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free, right? So Jesus gives us the truth, but if I don't know it, I don't get free in the area where I don't know it. So it's spirit and in truth, right? I have to be engaged in this process and say, I'm going to face each day and some things are going to come my way that I'm not going to like, but I'm going to worship you through that anyway. And my worship is going to become a weapon against the enemy's attempt to try to distract me. And really, frankly, to this morning on our worship team, that's what it was. It was all little distractions. And like after a while, you just get used to it and expect it. And you start to say, this is going to be a really good day. Because there's so many stupid little things going wrong, things not working, things that you've used a hundred times. And all of a sudden, there's a glitch in it. Why? Because he knows if he can get you distracted, he can get you upset, and get you emotionally hijacked, you're not going to focus on what God is asking you to do. Don't let him do it. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. That's a weapon. It's not conditioned on whether I feel happy today or not. Because you're not going to feel happy sometimes. So if your goal in life is happiness, you got a problem. If your goal in life is to please the Lord, then whether you're happy or not, right, you could still feel meaning in your life because you're doing his work. So Jesus said, my food is to do the will of the one who sent me, whether I'm happy or not. And worship is a weapon. Carolyn sang it in that, in that awesome song. My worship is a weapon. My shout is a weapon. My dance is a weapon against that thing that's trying to pull me down and keep me in bed depressed. It's pretty scary what the statistics are in America today about people that are living under depression. So I, I, was, I found it interesting that, you know, the, the word the Lord gave me, actually, if you remember, I was talking about a meeting we had last Saturday in Pittman, New Jersey, which is down by Cherry Hill. And we were with John and Cheryl Price and Marty Cassidy and other people. It was amazing. Were you there, Barbara? Wasn't it an amazing meeting? It was like three hours straight of different people trading the mic, giving prophetic words, praying for people, testimonies of people coming back from the dead. It was one of the best meetings I've ever been in, actually. And as we were there, the Lord gave me a word, and it was that he would weaponize my weakness. So part two of that that he gave me during the week is that he weaponizes my worship. Because they're very connected, right? It's in that time when you're feeling weak that you have a choice to either have the pity party and unplug yourself and say, I've tried this, it doesn't work, I give up. Or you could say, no, God, I know you're faithful. And, and it's so important to hear the songs in your spirit, man, because you got scripture in there, right? It's that faithful you are, faithful forever you will be. That's that, that song, right? Like you could just hear those choruses coming up inside of you. You leave the 99 and you come to find the one, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. He chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it. I don't deserve it. Yet he gives his life away to us. He still gives it away. And you got to just keep encouraging yourself with the truth of the word. Now, we're memorizing scripture. That's important. But as you're meditating on songs, if they're Christian, they're going to be based on scriptural principles. And today we were making decrees after one decree after another. Something happens when your voice comes through your system and you make that decree. I know who I am. Right? Like, it's not a haughty thing. It's like, wait a minute, devil, who do you think you're talking to? I'm a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people. God chose me. Why? Not on my merit. 
by, by his love. And it's unconditional. And I'm moving forward and becoming more like him every day. I mean, that really should be our goal, right? So I, I never really heard this word weaponized when I was growing up. It's kind of more of a modern word. And I looked it up, and it, it didn't come into the language until 1957. And it was the military that used it, as you would imagine. And it says here, can you get to that next one? Yeah, there you can see it now. It says the dictionary says weaponized in 57. And then at the onset of the Cold War, scientists first weaponized rockets, fitting them with nuclear material and equipping them for launch. And I'm going to say the, the rockets, in my analogy, is our prayers and our worship. But also in the decade of the decree, it's also our words become a weapon, especially when you speak the truth. So if you find yourself... Being negative, like really negative, is that the Lord or the devil? <laughs> like, what was the big complaint in the in the desert? Was the Lord was saying uh, Moses kept saying they're murmuring and complaining, they're murmuring and complaining, and the Lord was not pleased with the murmuring and the complaining. And it becomes part of the atmosphere that you're in if that's what you're doing all the time. Because ten of the spies came back with a bad report, and only two came back and said, "No, oh, no, we could take this land." So you can't get infected by your culture that's around you. And I, I know many of us in our jobs, it could be very negative, right? Lots of cursing, lots of stuff to talk about that. I'm shocked by things that people say in the workforce. But it's like, no, remember Daniel? When he was in Babylon, he was a captive. He wouldn't eat their diet. So you don't have to eat the world's food. You can say, you know what? I'm going to just have vegetables. And you watch and see if two weeks from now I'm not in a healthier shape than the rest of these people. And he was, right? So you can live by a different standard. You're in the world, but you don't have to be of the world. And Jesus even prayed to the Father and said, I pray, Lord, that not that you take them out of the world, but that you prosper them in the world. That's my, that's my summary of that. So our unfair advantage is the Holy Spirit and our rockets our prayers. And God weaponizes our rockets of prayers and worship as we keep decreeing and declaring. Even in the course of your day, you might not even be consciously thinking about it, but there's a song going in, in your spirit, man, that's over, over, repeating over and over again the truth of the Word of God in a song. Now, if you're not saved, music probably is affecting you in a different way, and you got suicide songs going over in your head. Maybe. Or Songs that just completely contradict the word of God, like me and Mrs. Jones got a thing going on. How about that one? Anybody old enough to remember that one? Here's the, the killer. We both know it's wrong, but it's much too strong to let it go now. That is a blatant lie. Blatant lie. You got no thing going on because Mr. Jones is going to find you with his shotgun, okay? <laughs> then you can have no thing going on. Oh, God, help us. Help us. Because the words of the songs, if you're not saved, are also going through your brain. And the devil uses that as a weapon. So you're in a war either way. I want to be on God's side. I know you do too.